questions about how we should view other veggies or other plants not on this list, like uh, veggies with butter or plants not on this list, what besides cauliflower is okay. So the veggies I listed on the grocery shopping list for the Lard Butt Challenge, pretty sure cauliflower rice, avocados, mushrooms, garlic and onions, and that's about it. So I want you to limit your plants just because they can cause lots of digestive upset. There's lots of anti-nutrients in them. Um, obviously, some of them can be pretty high carb. Um, like white potatoes are way high in oxalates and they spike your insulin like crazy. They are not going to help you lose weight. So these five plant foods that I included are pretty safe, as well as coconut. So coconut butter is pretty safe. Um, if you wanted to eat something like this, this would be lard butt approved. <laughs> um, this is just straight up coconut butter, um, as well as of course coconut oil, that's one of the real fats that I listed. Um, but anything not on that list um, is going to potentially have some problems. Um, broccoli would be okay, um, because it's, it's just like cauliflower, obviously the lacto-fermented raw veggies that is allowed. I want you to include sauerkraut or some lacto-fermented pickle. Um, but anything else, I don't really want you eating raw veggies because that, if it's not lacto-fermented, um, that is going to be really hard on your digestion and that's going to actually compete with your protein and fat for digestion. And I really want you to experience less bloating and it's wonderful. I actually have I lost a lot of inches, not necessarily weight, but like inches. I did lose like five pounds, but like, okay, so these were are like my mom jeans that I bought at the beginning of the summer. And look, I'm like not even kidding how big they are on me right now. Like, look at that. This is all from like literally one month of lard butt. Yeah. Can you see that? Look. Oh, they're huge. And they were like tight on my legs at the beginning. I mean, this has been like a whole summer of like um, losing weight postpartum. They're like insanely baggy. Look at that. It's like pathetic. Okay, so I'm not kidding when I say like your bloating will go down. Your water weight will go down. So if you don't include a ton of plants. I also left out ones that were just expensive. So, you know, people have asked me like, what about red bell peppers with my eggs or with my taco bowl? That's fine, but that's not gonna help you save money. You really have to buy those organic. And the things that I listed, you don't have to buy organic because I'm really trying to save you money on produce. Um, so if you buy red bell peppers, they're gonna have to be organic. You're gonna spend a dollar or two per pepper. And I just feel like that money needs to go towards the fat or the hamburger, which if you, if the money isn't an issue and you have budget for it, like that would be fine because they are low carb, but then they're also a nightshade and they might be triggering some autoimmune issues. And I kind of want the lard butt challenge to be a little bit of an elimination diet for you to see what you might be allergic to or what you might be sensitive to. And nightshades can be a real issue for some people. Um, so that's why I don't, I'm not including, and tomatoes, same way, like you must see how you do. So that tomatoes and peppers and eggplant, those are all an iffy list. Um, I did include mushrooms because they are nightshade, but they're actually not a plant. So people potentially could do better with those, but even, um, I don't know, see how you do, see what you're sensitive to. This lard butt challenge is really actually an intense elimination and detox diet. It is not just for weight loss. Um, even though I'm saying it's for weight loss because you will see so much size decrease just because the bloating's gonna go down. You'll start feeling a lot better. You'll start having a lot more energy, um, especially if you push through some of the detox symptoms, which I talked about in the other video, might be um, intense at the beginning, but keep going. Um, it will be worth it. I've noticed it. Like I have been doing this four weeks um, solidly and I'm not stopping. <laughs> so I'm going to keep ramping it up. So um, all that to say, be careful with adding other plants. Ask me. I have all of the oxalate and anti-nutrient information in my head and it is far too much to get down on paper or to explain. Um, squashes, even squashes are going to be really high in lectins. 
Um, and I get bloated every time I eat squash now. I used to eat a crap ton of squash and now I don't. Um, so the things I added on the list, you know, the avocados, you know, um, or if you're adding some kind of tropical fruit because you want more carbs, you want more safe carbs. Uh, first of all, the honey and raw milk are going to be the safest carbs because they have no anti-nutrients and they're technically from animals. They're technically animal-based, so you're not going to get all that stuff. And they don't have fiber, which can cause a lot of problems. Uh, but something, if you're going to eat a plant, if it has a thick skin, like a coconut shell or an avocado, you know, those are all going to have thick skins, so you don't... Um, those are typically going to be safer plants. Ones that have a seed that you can throw away. So like the avocado pit, you take that out and throw it away. All the anti-nutrients are going to be in that seed and not in the flesh of the avocado. So um, anything with a lot of seeds is going to be a bad plan because um, this is a no nuts, no seeds diet. Um, that makes the biggest difference for weight loss, I'm pretty sure. Like no nuts and no seeds. Those polyunsaturated fatty acids are so weight gaining and those anti-nutrients just keep these chronic health issues like going, going, going. Um, so things like raspberries um, that have tons of teeny tiny little seeds, don't eat stuff like that. Um, leave that out. Um, just no seeds. Dates would be okay. If you are including carbs and you're not wanting to lose too much weight, dates would be fine because they have a pit, you throw it out. Um, so anyway, that's sort of a, a guideline. I don't want you eating salads, like no raw lettuce. Um, all that's going to compete with digestion, uh, with your meat and fat, and that's the priority. Half a pound of ruminant animal red meat a day, six tablespoons of fat. I want you to be able to digest this. I want your body to start healing. I want your you be able to access all these really nutrient-dense foods to their full potential. So... Um, if you have a specific question about a particular vegetable or plant that you want to include, ask me in the comments below. Turnips would be fine. Turnips are low oxalate and low carb, and they would be they would be fine. Um, if you, I'm just like thinking, what would be okay? Um, as long as they're cooked and you have plenty of fat in them, you know, stuff like that. Ask me a question if you have a specific fruit or vegetable. Um, that you want to include and you're like, okay, is this one safe, not safe, how's this going to do? Um, just ask me, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you in another video.